Hi, I'm Gabriel, and this is Learning English Path. And in this lesson, I'm going to teach you the pendulum path of learning English. Do you know what this is? It's called a pendulum. Now, what does a pendulum do? Well, if you bring it up here like this and you let go, it swings from left to right, right? It oscillates. We call this oscillation. It oscillates from left to right without my hand doing anything, right? You see, I'm not moving here, at least not by much. Right? I'm not going like this, okay? So how does this work? How does this pendulum swing back and forth without me doing anything? Well, it involves two kinds of energies. Potential energy and kinetic energy. So what, what does this mean? If I bring it up here and then release it, right, I let go, <laughs> then the gravity of the earth pulls it down, right? The natural force of gravity pulls, pulls it down. Just like if I were to jump up, gravity would pull me down, right? Gravity pulls the pendulum back down. And as it's coming down, as it's swinging down, it's building up potential energy, right? What is potential energy? This just means potential is another word for possible. So we might say that a person has potential. If they are very intelligent and very hardworking, then they have the potential to succeed in some kind of study or some kind of job, or they have the potential to succeed in life. But they're not there yet because they haven't yet done the studying. They haven't yet got the knowledge, right? So they only have the potential, the possibility. So the pendulum builds up this potential energy as it comes down because it's not using, it's not using any energy. Gravity is pulling it down. So it doesn't have to use any energy, which means that when it gets to the bottom, it has all this potential energy stored up and ready to go that it's converted into real kinetic energy in this case. Kinetic means movement. So all of that potential, all of that possibility is turned into movement, right? So we have, we release the pendulum, it comes down, it gets all this potential energy, gets to the bottom, right? And then the potential energy is all fired up and ready to go that kinetic energy pulls it up and then when it gets up here it's used all of its kinetic energy so it comes back down here gravity wants to pull it back down again and more potential energy is created when it comes down again so again that potential energy is converted into kinetic energy and it comes back up this way and then that's used up and it comes back down again creating more potential energy, right? And it keeps going back and forth like this between potential energy and kinetic energy, right? That's the beauty of a pendulum. So what does this have to do with learning English, right? It actually has everything to do with learning English. You can design your learning English path based on the idea of the path of a pendulum, okay? How can you do this? Well, 
potential energy can be curiosity. Let me say that again. Potential energy is your curiosity. Okay, so you are the pendulum. You are the pendulum and what you need to do, your first job, right? Your first job is to pull yourself up here and let go, okay? And as you let go, you are creating a lot of curiosity about something. It does not have to be English. You didn't expect me to say that, did you? That's right. You do not have to start with being curious about English. Perhaps you just know that you need to study English, but maybe you don't have a lot of curiosity there yet, but you do have curiosity in science. Let's just use science as an example. If you really are curious about physics, then you start up here and you, let's say, how do you get up here? You have to read a physics book or maybe you just see a, a picture or you watch a five minute video on YouTube about physics and you become really curious, right? So what happens is you need to force yourself first to do something like that watch something, read something, look at something, and then you build up all that curiosity. And what then does that curiosity turn into? It turns into the drive to study, right? So you're intensely curious about physics, and then you're, you get so curious, you build up so much potential that you, you read a physics book, right? You go out and you you go to the library and you get a physics book in your own language, okay? Something in your own language, that's fine. You read about that and you, you learn something that you want to then communicate to me or to someone else in English, okay? So, but you don't know how to communicate about this physics topic in English yet. You don't know. So now that you know this physics information, then you become curious about how do I, how do I talk about this in English? So then maybe you use a dictionary or you go out and you get yourself a physics book in English and you get curious about how to how to do that and then you go study the English for that physics language and when you when you study the English you find something else out right maybe this particular physics book in English has something about philosoph philosophy right some physicist mentioned uh, something about the existence of, of God maybe right maybe it was Stephen Hawking or uh, Michio Kaku, right? These are famous physicists. And they talked about something to do with philosophy. So you think, oh, wow, I want to know more about this philosophy, the philosophy of, of, of the universe, right? So you become really curious about that. So that's the potential energy, right? The curiosity about this philosophy. So then you go out and you think, well, I, I, maybe, maybe you can't learn about it in English yet. So you go out and you you buy a philosophy book in your own language and you, you read that book or you watch a documentary on it, right? And you learn about that and you think, wow, now I really want to, I really want to tell Gabriel about this in English, right? So you go out and you think, oh, how, how can I express this in English? So then you become curious about how to express that in English and that curiosity turns into studying right? And you study that in English. And then in that philosophy book in English, or in that dictionary, maybe you stumble upon a word to do with, with art, right? Maybe there was an artist that, 
that painted something that had to do with these philosophical ideas. So you you become curious about that. Wow, I want to learn more about this art. So that curiosity builds up, right? And then you go out and you buy a book on that. So then you study that art. And you again, you think, wow, I just learned about expressionism or abstract art, right? And I really want to know how to talk about that in English. So then that builds up into curiosity, right? Do you see how this works? So English is on one side and everything else, your life path, your knowledge about everything else is on the other side. So you become curious about, about life and then you become curious about how to express that stuff in English. And then when you learn the English, maybe eventually you will become good enough to read about things in English or learn about things in English, not in your own language, right? So when you eventually do read, let's say you read about an art book in English, and you become curious about more art, then you, you can say, well, you know, my English now is so advanced that I can read about art in English, but then I'm learning new concepts about art that I, I, don't, I don't know how to express that. Maybe Gabriel doesn't even know how to express this stuff in English. So, I'm learning more and more advanced English, right? I'm becoming more curious about these advanced English words and how to uh, express things in more interesting ways in English. So I'm naturally becoming cu more curious about the English language as I'm becoming mu more and more curious about all these other subjects uh, beautiful subjects of life, right? That's how it works. And the, the amazing thing about a pendulum is that it could go on forever. And it would go on forever if not for something called friction, right? Sometimes a pendulum stops, right? So if I were to let this go now, it would go back and forth, and I don't know how long this would go on, maybe about a minute, but then after a minute, it would slowly stop, right? This pendulum would stop. It would slow down, slow down, slow down, and eventually it would stop. And you might think, well, why? Like if, if the potential energy always converts into kinetic energy and then comes up again, why, why would it stop? Friction. Friction is when something rubs up against another thing. Now you might think, well, but Gabriel, nothing is rubbing up against the pendulum, right? Nothing is stopping it, right? There's nothing in the way. Air is in the way. <laughs> it's the friction of just air. Now, what does this have to do with your learning English path. Well, can you see air? No, you can't see air, right? So what has stopped you in the past from continuing with your curiosity and studying something, right? When we're children, we're all very curious. We're curious about the world and we, we love to, to, at least I loved to read about things as a kid and we, we want to know the answers to everything, right? And when we're adults, something stops us, right? And sometimes we can see the things that stop us. Sometimes something is so obvious that it, it stops us. It's like a hand coming down and stopping the pendulum. That is the friction, right? What is friction? So if, if you're standing in a subway, right? And 
there are, the subway is very crowded and you're rubbing up against other people, right? That's friction between two people. But a pendulum can stop from just the friction with the air. And the air, when you're learning English, think of the air as all of the hidden stresses in your life, all of the hidden things that you might not think are very important that are slowly <laughs> taking that energy away from you, right? Your curiosity, your energy for life and your energy for learning starts to become exhausted through this friction with these invisible forces, these invisible stresses of life, right? Maybe it's uh, the fact that you need to, to get an A on this test in order to, to get ahead on li in life, right? Or maybe your boss said something, or maybe it's your relationships in life. Maybe your parents said something and, and everything's just, just crashing down, right? Maybe it's nothing's crashing down, but maybe it's little things, lots of little things that make you just want to just go and watch a movie and not learn anything. You just want to break, right, from these little things. Or maybe it's little distractions in your life. You know, you watch a, a silly YouTube video, right, and this distracts you from your curiosity about life. This happens. This happens to everybody. Okay? And you don't notice it. It's just slowly wearing down on your curiosity for life and your curiosity for learning English. It causes you to slowly get tired, to slowly want to avoid studying because it slowly pulls your, it pulls your curiosity down, right? It's like those things are the friction of your curiosity. So how can you deal with this? How can you beat the friction? Well, all of us pendulums stop eventually, right? We all stop. But then how do we get going again? Well, we need to build up that curiosity again, right? We need to pull ourselves up and we need to release our potential. We need to release our curiosity, okay? You need to find an hour, two hours, a day if you can in your life to allow yourself to become curious. Become curious about something in life. Get that pendulum swinging again. Start oscillating that curious energy. How can you do this? How can you do this without becoming overwhelmed by the distractions on the internet or on social media or the stresses of life. You need to find yourself, schedule yourself a chunk of time to raise your pendulum. Go to the library. Get 10 books, right? Just find 10 random books. It doesn't matter what the books are. It doesn't have to be English, not English books. 10, 10 books that catch your eye and put them on the table in the library. Spend one hour, two if you can, two hours just looking through the books, looking for something that makes you curious. That is so important in life. Sometimes we forget what we're curious about. That's the friction. But you can remind yourself by doing this exercise, okay? Go to the library, switch off your phone. 
no internet, no no social media. If if you don't have a library near you, then I understand if you need the internet, but just have one thing on, one Wikipedia page. <clears throat> Well, it can be 10 Wikipedia pages, but no social media, no other internet pages. Turn off your phone, just use Wikipedia. Why Wikipedia? Well, because it's excellent for learning without advertisements, without distractions, okay? But it can pull you in and make you curious about something you want to learn, okay? Schedule this. Schedule two hours of your day. If you find yourself in a slump where you're not curious about studying anything, this is what you need to do. Schedule time to raise your pendulum and release that curiosity, okay? And then do what I suggested about learning about something in your own language and then becoming curious about how to tell me about it or how to communicate about it in English and go back and forth, back and forth, okay? This is the pendulum path of learning English, okay? In the comments, tell me what you are curious about. What are you curious about learning, all right? I want to know because I want you to do this. This is what the best learners do. They, they are curious. Build that curious energy. Let me know in the comments. Give this video a like if you like it. All right. Subscribe because I have so much good stuff on this channel you do not want to miss. And I'm going to be coming out with new lessons like this all the time. All right. There are many paths of learning English. This is one very good path, the pendulum path of learning English. And if you, if you are already subscribed to my, to my email list and you're getting my five words of the week, you will know that last week one of the words was trajectory, right? Trajectory. And that is very similar to a path, especially a path of a pendulum or of a planet, right? A trajectory. Now, if you're interested in getting these five words of the week and you're interested in getting my guide of 101 songs to learn English, it's a free PDF guide, then definitely click the link in the description and I will send you that for free and I will send you five new words of the week to study every week, every Sunday, all right? Stick with me, my friend. Keep learning and keep going.